Welcome, I'm David, I'm Lindsay, and, and this, this is Desmond's Donders. We approach our planned stopover in the dark. It's uh, a fair distance from home. We have seen sheep, deer and sheep on the way in, but the new headlight adjustment does not seem to be working. It hardly shows what I want to see on the road. But then we get parked up and are presented with a beautiful sight. Well worth the journey in. We've just arrived at our destination and the moon's out, not quite full, but casting a lovely moonlight scene over the loch and the barely visible mountains and the camera isn't going to pick it up and it's having difficulty focusing but I was hearing tawny owls when I first came out, off in the distance, the other side of the water. Well, this is unexpected. After last night's moonlight uh, delight, we can see the mountains in the distance and the loch is flat calm. Let's take a look around. A bit like last time, the scaffy wagons here. We're in Eagle Country and we're going to keep our eyes peeled and see if we can see one. The loch is so calm, it's hard to tell which way's up and which way's down. While we were expecting reasonable weather, we weren't exactly expecting brilliant sunshine and calm. And of course, although I advertise this as being a dead zone, guess who's got a signal? And it isn't me.
The weather has changed ever so slightly. We've still got blue skies, we've still got fluffy white clouds, but the wind's got up. Uh, not, very, not a great deal. It's uh, just put a, a wave on the loch and uh, it'd be lovely out there right now in a boat fishing for the trout that have been rising. Lindsay's away for a walk and uh, I might take a wander along to investigate some things I've seen from the air. So uh, let's take a look around the loch. The bird count continues to rise, slower than expected, but a lot of people have been by, so I suspect it'll uh, get better as the day goes on. Still 11 different species and lots of them and some interesting species, but maybe we'll talk about that later. It's a lovely day, as per the forecast, and it's hopefully he's got it right for the rest of the weekend. A small burn with a set of small falls falling down from the hills and down into the loch. Let's see if we can find some more on the bridge. Just pools and the burn as the water continues to flow. And then down into the loch. And the sun shining. Still. From the bridge, the road goes on, uh, but we're nearly at the end of the loch, and no doubt Lindsay has taken some photographs and had something to say as she took both cameras. It's a beautiful place. I can't understand why this is only the second time we've been here. It's not that far outside our, our limit for a normal weekend, never mind a well within the long weekend limit. Scardroy Estate forms part of the extensive Strathconan Estate and extends to nearly 83,000 acres. It is situated in central Russia in the Highlands of Scotland and the estate offers a beautiful and varied terrain from open rolling country to a mountainous landscape. The area includes the estates Strathconan, Scardroy and Lejowen. The estate covers large parts of three deep glacial glens, Meg, Bran and Orin, which are deep and narrow valleys running west to east. The large proportion of the high ground is over 1,000 feet and with the high moor more than 30,000 feet above, sorry, 3,000 feet above sea level. Strathconan is the longest glen in Scotland, stretching for more than 20 miles.
A memorial cairn was built as part of Scotland's Rural Pass project. It is located close to the lodge at the head of Loch Scardroy. It is a mortar bonded stone column, circular in plan, and is situated on the crest of a prominent grassy knoll. At the west end of the loch, it is two metres in height and castellation appears on the tapered top. Diameter at the top of the column is 1 metre and at the bottom 1.5 metres. There are three plaques recessed into the east, north and south sides. And under a small badge of armoured arm with fist clenching a broken lance there is an inscription John Frederick Boyce Coombe CBD Major General Colonel. Zars RS PAO 12th of July 1967. The smaller plaques are 3.5 square with the S1, the southern one, having the possible emblem of the Hussars embossed on it and the northern one the possibility that of the St John's Cross. You will see the Ken on the video right now. Loch Scardroy is a natural loch lying at the top of the River Meg Valley, approximately 8.5 miles beyond Loch Meg. It lies at an elevation of 145 metres above sea level and is approximately 2.75 kilometres in length. It is up to 500 metres wide and has a total area of 101 hectares. The loch reaches depths in excess of 50 metres, so the best boat fishing is to be expected along the margins and in the shallower bays at both ends of the loch. In addition to wild brown trout, Scardroy also contains arctic char, so there are also ferox trout present.
Thank you for watching Desmond's Donners. And remember, please take nothing but memories and leave nothing but tracks. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and hopefully we'll see you next time.